know what I'm tired of? Wasting power. In particular, I'm tired of wasting power just moving it around in my system. I'm tired of having to use bigger wires, adding up all that cost and weight. And you know where I'm going, right? Higher voltages, of course, because, uh, Ohm's Law, duh. <laughs> if we crank up the V, then the I can be lower. And everybody's happy when the I is lower, right? Wait, what? Okay, maybe not everybody is happy. The safety guys don't like voltages over 60 or so, and my power converter people start having convulsions if we need to convert from higher voltages. Well, you can't please everybody, I guess. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. I need a good solution from converting from my higher voltages down to safe and useful voltages. And my guest today is here to help. I'll be talking with Ian Massa from Vicor about transforming 400 volt into power for self systems. That should make everybody happy. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Vicor. Hi, Ian. Thank you so much for joining me. Great to be here. So, Ian, today we're talking about the transformation of 400 volts into power for self systems. But first off, for my audience who may not know, what is a self system and what kind of transformation are we really talking about here? Sure. To start off, self is an acronym and it stands for separated or safe extra low voltage. And it's really the voltage that we typically use to power the devices that you're familiar with electronics being in. Anything from vehicles to computers to smartphones to the rise of robots and stuff that you would see on a normal day. So Ian, what's the best voltage for distributing power? Well, I think if you asked an electrical engineer, they would probably tell you the highest voltage is the best voltage. And the reason for that, I think you have to look back a little bit at some math, but let's make it simple, right? Let's talk about a source and a load, where you're getting the power and where you want to deliver it. They're separated by some amount of distance, and that distance has resistance. And so there's an effect on power when you try to transmit between source and load where you lose it because of resistance. So a little bit of math there below, right? Power is voltage times current. But if you also play with the numbers, you see it's current squared times resistance. So you see that the more resistance, the more power is basically lost through distributing. So if you want to distribute 100 watts, would you do it at 100 volts or would you do it at 1 volt? You would do it at the lowest possible current, right? So you would want to do it at the highest possible voltage. So it's an important lesson just to start off the conversation. For the highest efficiency of distribution, keep the voltage high and the current low. That's the best way to start. And we're going to now talk about how we can make that happen with the BCM. Cool. That definitely makes sense. Now, Ian, here on Chalk Talk, we've talked about power converters quite a bit. But if we're considering efficiency and density, which are super important here especially, how do these different solutions compare? So I know you and your audience is very familiar with broad set of options you have in the marketplace right now. I mean, people have been making converters for a long time. So there is a difference, though, and this is meant to be a relative difference. I'm talking about regulated versus fixed ratio. So regulated, there's a range of efficiencies that can be achieved, but it's much less power dense than a loosely regulated and much less power dense than a resonant or a fixed ratio, which also are all much less dense in terms of watt per cubic centimeters, watt per volume, than what the BCM can do. But the BCM also has the best efficiency. So if you're looking to create a system that needs to be dense, needs to be efficient, the BCM is going to be your best solution for that. And we can talk a little bit more about the advantages next. All right, Ian, let's start at the top of that great looking graph, BCM. What do you see are the biggest benefits here? Sure. As we talked about, I think the BCM density, density for component position flexibility is what we say. But what that means is a high density product is going to allow you to have the choice of where you want to put it physically in the system that works best for you either because it's the best for your thermal solution or it's the best to minimize the high current run you need to the load. But that's the primary important advantage you're going to get out of using the BCM. Next would be efficiency. It was also on the graph, but right, remember efficiency minimizes wasted energy. So you want to keep the currents low, the voltage high, so you can preserve efficiency through distribution. But then when you get down to those lower voltages, convert in that small, dense place that you need with the BCM. 
Now, the great thing about BCMs is they have an inherent ability to be used in an array without additional components or circuitry. You really just connect them together and they'll work in an array. And so you can scale to higher power levels if you need. They have fast transient response. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. But what that means in essence is you can give power as quickly as it's demanded. It's not going to be the converter that's going to slow you down in terms of delivering all the amps you need to power whatever you're doing. And then last, we're going to talk a little bit more later on about the transformation, the ability to transform sources, and in one case, a battery, into what we call a virtual battery. Interesting. Now, Ian, can we walk through how a BCM works? And is there any difference in operation between 1 over 4 or 4 over 1 K factors? That's a great point. So let's look at the BCM and how it works. It's really made of these three blocks. There's two switching blocks, a primary and a secondary. And between them is essentially an ideal transformer. And so what these switching blocks are doing is converting DC to AC. And AC is being converted across that transformer. And what we call the K factor, which is really just the ratio of the turns, allows you to convert, do the divide or multiply voltage or current depending upon the K factor. And you see that ratio can be actually oriented a number of different ways. But if it's 1 over 4, you're dividing. But if it's 4 to 1, you're multiplying as appropriate to voltage and current as shown in the table. So that's the flexibility that it gives you in terms of being able to use that ideal transformer capability within the BCM to divide or multiply voltage or current. So Ian, switching stages typically impact overall efficiency, right? How do they minimize losses in a BCM? Great point. As you said, when you're switching, especially if you have current going through the switch, you're going to have some resistance. And remember back to our previous conversation, that resistance is going to cause some losses. So if you're switching when current's going through, you want to avoid that. And the way we do that is with zero voltage switching or zero current switching, where if you also remember talking about how these switching blocks are converting AC to DC, you want to switch when the sine wave is going through the zero crossing. So you're minimizing the amount of energy that's being expended by that resistive element of the switch. And that allows us to switch at very high frequencies because we're not generating a lot of heat due to the switching event through that resistance. Okay, Ian, here on Chalk Talk, we've talked about power converters quite a bit. So I have to ask... Where's the energy storage? Good question. I think when most people think of converters, they think of an inductor. They think of the energy storage that you typically have when you're trying to push and pull current into it. But in this case, if you look at this drawing, you can actually see two inductors in a way. They're uh, sharing a magnetic field, and that's how they're exchanging energy. And we talked about how they're dividing or multiplying current or voltage. But what they're doing is transferring charge so quickly that there's no need to hold on to the energy inside the part. There's not as much heating as you would normally have with a traditional inductor-based design. Now, the other advantage out of this, which really ties together all the other things we've talked about, is this low impedance path. And this low impedance path is primarily due to the high frequency switching that we have that enables small magnetic components to be used because the magnetic currents are going to remain low. The small magnetic components mean small path lengths, right? Remember, less resistance for the turns. And put together with a package that has very low parasitic inductance on the input and output connections, and you have something that has a very flat frequency response from DC out to a megahertz or so, that allows people to operate this with all the advantages that you would get there. Ah, okay. So, Ian, we're done, right? We've solved all of our power conversion problems? Not all of them, but I think it's important to go back to the problem we had talked about in the beginning, right? Which is a little bit about how when you have a distance between source and load, there is some amount of resistance, and that resistance causes losses. So how do we create a distribution system that allows us to optimize for efficiency? And if you want, also optimize for density. And what we talked about with what the BCM does, right, dividing voltage, for example, is if you pick a source and a load where the ranges are matched and can be scaled by an integer the K factor, which I talked about before, you can make a very efficient power distribution chain where you don't need regulation and you can distribute at whatever voltage you want, dividing down at the load where it makes the most sense to convert for the least amount of losses. And that's what's important about this. Okay. So Ian, are you saying that fixed ratio is the best way to convert for distribution? Well, I think that fixed ratio is definitely the best way if you have a problem that needs high efficiency and density, and you can match those two things together in terms of output voltage of the source and the input voltage of the load. In this case, what we talk about is we talk about transforming sources into, in this case, a virtual battery. So you can see how 
a Vicor BCM can be used to take a high voltage battery, 384 volts. If you divide by eight, use a K factor of one over eight, you can make that look like a 48 volt virtual battery to whatever distribution system you're using. We call that transformation. Battery has been transformed. Now that's different than what we could call decoupled with a conventional converter, where you are regulating. You have a wide input range, which maybe is something you need, but what you give up is you give up in efficiency. If you remember back to the graph, right? You give up in efficiency and you get an ideal output, but if you don't need that and you want to maximize what you can do for density, maximize what you can do with efficient power distribution, then I think the Vicor BCM will allow you to achieve that. Okay, cool. Now, earlier you mentioned that electric vehicles were going to be an important application area here. What does an electrical vehicle design really look like in this context? I think this is a great example of how the BCM can be used and is being used in some early designs where a very high voltage battery that you might have in in an EV needs to be turned into a voltage that is distributed and then later used. So that high voltage, which isn't quite safe, right? We talked about what SELV is. We want to turn it into something safe. So you can use a BCM to take that 384-volt battery and turn it into a 48-volt battery of the same capacity, the same performance, distribute 48 volts, and then even downstream, convert it again to 12 volts if you need it. This example is great because it shows a BCM, which is isolated, converting 384 to 48 And then an alternative implementation of a BCM called an NBM, which is a non-isolated bus converter, converting 48 to 12 for use at the various loads within the car. And while we have a picture of the product, you can see the efficiency is very high. So you're able to do this conversion without losing the energy that you've built up in that car and saved in that car, and that's going to define how far you can drive. So that's why it's so important. I can definitely see that. So Ian, can we get into the AC to DC front end a little bit? Sure. One of the other applications that we have a long history of using BCMs in is an AC-DC front ends, which have been built for decades, a very long time, right? They're primarily made of these three stages, rectification, some kind of power factor correction and regulation, some energy storage at high voltage. Then you need to step down typically or convert to an output, in this case, 48 volts. And so you can use the BCM to either do this all within one box if you wanted, or you can distribute that 380 volts from whatever battery storage or capacitive storage you might have in the system and convert 48 volts as close to the load as you would need, taking advantage of all the benefits you get with high voltage DC distribution, like lower resistive losses and smaller cabling. Okay, so Ian, do you have another example you could share with me? Yeah, last, I just want to make mention to something that I think people have seen a lot of, but probably don't realize how prevalent it's gotten globally is the use of drones. And in this case, a tethered drone. There's a lot of real-world applications, not only for security, but for geographic modeling, for evaluations, land surveys, where you're basically running this very small wire, right? Because you're tethering the drone to some equipment on the ground. Usually it's plugged in. It's an AC to DC front end, like we just talked about. And you want to make that high voltage DC wire as small as possible, right? So you want that voltage to be as high as possible so the currents are as low as possible. But when you get up to that drone, you want something that's light and small, which the BCM is a great solution for to turn that high voltage DC into whatever you need with a buck boost, as you can see, to power motors, sensors, or even a backup battery for the drone to return home in case it does lose the tether. Okay, Ian. So let's talk about solutions here. What kind of solutions does Vicor have specifically for BCMs? So in BCMs, we actually have a number of different families. The the two that I would mention right off the bat and quickly is a high-voltage DC input family, so 260 to 410 volts in, three different K factors, so 1 over 8, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, which can get you to, depending on how you would input the voltage, 48, 24, 12 volts out, the common voltages that people use to distribute at an SELV value through their system. We have those in the chip ECM 6123 form factor. And then we also have a higher voltage input family called the ultra high voltage BCM that's in the VIA package. And you can see that down at the bottom. It's 400 to 700 volts in or 500, 800. Both K factor of 1 over 16, both around a kilowatt and a half at nominal output voltage. But those are very much used right now in drone applications where people are trying to get a very high voltage to go up as far as possible to the drone. Both of these families have been released and are available for sale now. 
cool. Now, what about DCMs? What kind of DCM solutions do you have? Hi, I'm glad you asked. Even though we talked mostly about BCMs, we did spend some time talking about when you do need regulation, what you would need to do there. And for that, Vicor has a number of products in both the chip and the VIA packages that I discussed before. They all have, again, very wide input ranges, 260 to 410, and they have a variety of different outputs from 3.3 to 48 volts out and trimmable ranges that are in packages of up to 600 watts. So a real broad range of families if you need regulation, but also the BCM family and a variety of different K factors. If you don't need the regulation and you want to take advantage of the high power density and efficiency of distributing power that way. Cool. Well, Ian, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Great to talk to you. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Vicor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.